Hello, my name is Liam Scanlon and I'm a student at the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. The title of the paper that I'll be talking about today is Evaluation of Cross Domain Text Summarization. So, traditionally, text summarization, um, which is converting a big block of text into a short, concise sentence, is usually um, done via an extractive or an abstractive approach. So extractive approaches are um, when the algorithm sort of selects a sentence that it thinks best summarizes and represents the document. Whereas an abstractive approach, uh, which is normally like a neural network or something, tries to understand the document and generate from scratch a new sentence um, that best summarizes the, the document. But recently, hybrid text summarization has come about, which is a combination of the two. And so in this paper, we evaluate the performance of two recently proposed hybrid text summarization models, reinforcement learning and inconsistency loss. Um, and we use both automatic metrics as well as human judgments. In conclusion, we find that um, the extraction then abstraction, which is the reinforcement learning approach, outperforms the extraction and abstraction approach, which is the inconsistency loss approach, um, particularly for cross-domain applications. We also do human evaluations and they reveal that Meteor and Rouge 2, which is a bigram, so a, a two-word match, uh, metrics correlate the best with human judgments. Um, but ultimately, they, these are quite rudimentary um, metrics. <clears throat> so just quickly to delve into the different approaches, um, both claim state-of-the-art scores, generalization performance, and readability on the CNN Daily Mail dataset. Um, the reinforcement learning approach, uh, which is which is a diagram here, um, <clears throat> essentially the extractor is trained to pick sentences, which is classification, that will result in high rouge match scores. And they sort of separate the abstractor and the extractor quite somewhat. So the influence on the abstractor is limited. And they say this improves the fluency and performance of the model. So here you've got your, your training um, and your reference sentence, your document sentences. And uh, you do you train the extractor first on, on picking the best sentences. And then using that, you train the abstractor on a sentence to sentence um, training regime. This is very different to the inconsistency loss model, which applies different mathematical weights to all parts of the um, the whole thing, and it does the whole thing all at once. So it combines word level and sentence level attention in a single loss minimization function. Um, <clears throat> like I said, they both claim state-of-the-art scores. Um, with RL coming out on top for Unigram and and, and longest common subsequence, but uh, Biogram is winned out by um, inconsistency loss. So this is what we explore in this paper. To evaluate this, uh, we make use of two corpora, um, the GigaWord dataset, which is a huge news wire uh, collation from like Chinese newspapers and, and, and New York newspapers of all around the world in, in English. Um, and the CNN Daily Mail is a, is a much smaller but more publicly available data set. That's, um, that was the data set that both these models were originally trained and, and tested on. And so we make four direct paired comparisons here. The first one is we test the ideal performance of both the models, RL and IL, and we train and test them on GigaWeb. So that's an in-domain test. And the second comparison we do is more a generalization performance of both of them. So we use the original model that they have trained on CNN Daily Mail, and we test that on the GigaWeb um, corpus. So it's, it's a cross-domain test. And then we do two more where within each model we compare the in-domain and cross-domain performance. Uh, label here is ID and XD for cross-domain. Um, and so the main metrics we use are Rouge, 
unigram, bigram, trigram, longus common subsequence, and skip unigram, as well as meteor, which is like a like a machine like a machine language learning, uh, like, a, like a different metric. And so we do human judgments uh, in this as well. And so uh, we create a survey with 400 instances. And out of the four judges, we have each read a reference summary, which is this one in bold here. And so that's the real summary of the article. And then they read two randomly ordered neural network generated headline summaries. So this will be the comparisons. It might be cross domain and in domain or or um, RL and IL, but the judges don't know that, obviously. And so they could pick either one of the generated headlines, or they can pick none, indicating that both were equally good or equally bad. Um, and on average, uh, each judge spent around 21 seconds on each choice, um, so times that by 400. Um, in this exact example, it's found that the second generated sentence, uh, the extractor has selected the wrong sentence, possibly overjudging the importance of the words missing and disaster. Um, so here, this sentence does make a lot more sense um, compared to the real summary. But but this one's, I mean, while it is correct, it, it's not the, the crux of the, the article. Anyway. <clears throat> Going over the results, um, so out of the four paired comparisons, um, this was the first one. It was in domain, trained and tested on GigaWord, and both models were quite neck and neck. Um, as you can see in this diagram here, a lot of the judges weren't sure between the two and obviously picked um, neither are uh, better. So either they were both good or both equally bad. Um, and it was made sure that the sentence length, 47 here, is was made the same for each paired comparison, as it's quite quite a lot of these metrics are sensitive to that. Um, but ultimately, in-domain RL came out on top uh, by the human judgments, which is C here, 87 to 83. Uh, moving on to the cross-domain, which is tested on CNN, uh, sorry, trained on CNN Daily Mail and tested on GigaWord. It was clear that RL was a lot better in both all the metrics and the human judgments. Um, <clears throat> in the cross-domain and in-domain comparison for RL, it was interesting, interesting to see that the metrics didn't fully agree with the human judgments here, Rouge 3 and Rouge SU being against the humans which were choosing the, the cross-domain model as being better. Um, and the agreement between the judges were within desired ranges. So this is just a quick example of, of where the, the automatic metrics were in disagreement. I mean, here we've got the reference summary. China takes Asian woman's volleyball crown. So China has beat uh, South Korea. But in this first um, summary, it says South Korea beat China in the women's volleyball world championship. So that's, that's factually wrong. And the second one is is the correct summary, but but see the first one would be chosen by the automatic metrics to be more correct, whereas the second one is chosen by humans to be more correct, because um, the automatic metrics will match women's in volleyball as is quite important here, whereas it's not in the second one. So in conclusion, um, the success of RL suggests that. Limiting the word level attention in the abstractor from being modified during final training works quite well. And it's found that the cross-domain generalization of RL was so good it outperformed its own in-domain model, suggesting that the noise in the GigaWord dataset negatively, negatively affected the in-domain training. <clears throat> Going back to our final thoughts, um, it's found that extraction then abstraction outperforms extraction and abstraction, particularly for cross-domain applications. And it's found that Meteor and Rouge 2 correlate best with human judgments. Thank you for listening.